Now, like lots of other cases we've talked about, there's not just one size fits all remote sensing satellite. It depends on a variety of parameters. Yeah, so these are sort of things you just think about. If someone says, I want remote sensing to do X. Yep. These are sort of things you have to worry about. So one is resolution. How much detail do you need to see? So yeah, so I guess need to see, that's right, because that's going to affect your costs, and you may actually be able to get away with poor resolution, right? That's right. If you want to track a hurricane that's bearing down on Florida, then having 10 centimeter resolution probably doesn't matter. You're that's right. 100 meters is probably just fine. But if you're trying to track cars in a suburb to plan a McDonald's, you don't want to see it over a kilometer baseline because that's just one suburb. But a kilometer would be fine to work out a new suburb was there. Yes. Um, then there's the area imaged. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is... For, it's obvious in the military you might be staring really intently at this base meanwhile the massive invasion is happening at that base over there yep. so you've got to be able to see what the areas of interest um, and if you're trying to measure the crappie or then you have to look at very large areas and this becomes kind of a technical challenge right there's only so many limits of your pixel and camera you can That's detect right. then there's revisit time uh, this is something a lot of movies get wrong they show like real-time videos viewed from space uh, no. but of course your spacecraft is moving fast it's not going to hover over one place the spacecraft can't hover over That's one right. place except geostationary and then it's so far away it can't see any details that's right your resolution is now gone and so that gets us a, a, a critical example and then there's the wavelength which could be visible infrared or radio which is going to be really important so, so we'll, we'll come back to all of this these. depends i guess on what you're looking at yep so let's think about resolution here's a picture you were heavily involved in. that's right space selfie so this is a car park not very far from where we're standing now that's right and this is a resolution 0.4 meter image. And what you can see is you can pick out individual cars. You can say there's a white car and a red car. You, can, you know, if you had a d dramatically different shaped car, you can see it. You can actually see that this is an oval. You can see the, the line markings for soccer or football. Yeah, so this, I mean, you're not going to be able to recognize Peep Rad as opposed to Paul, but you can probably tell there was a white car as opposed to a red car. OK. But let's degrade it to 4 meter resolution. Uh, I mean, you could see it's a car park. I would say you probably can make that out as a car park, and that's an oval, some trees. Yeah, you can't really pick out the lines on the picture. No, anymore. you can't. You could probably still make out that this is a Torres, uh, the Torres Strait and the Aboriginal flags on it. Just but about, yeah. You would also have to know that a bit. And you can tell there's a tree there, but you've got no hope of working out what sort of tree it is. You don't know if that's a road or a path or just some dirt. Okay. Yep. And then if you get 20 meter resolution. I, you can't see anything. Well, you can, but you can tell there's a green thing up there. I guess. So you can pick there's a playing field and buildings. And so I guess if you're looking for plants or crops, that actually may be perfect for what you need if you want to look at what is happening for plants and crops over an entire state, for instance. That's right. So this is limited mostly by diffraction. Yes. That same, remember that the radio beams spread out because of the wave nature of light. That also applies to visible light. Yep. So to get a really sharp image, you need a very big telescope in the lowest orbit you can work at a short visible wavelength. And it turns out that for the, the, the American Keyhole satellites, which are more or less clones of the Hubble Space Telescope, yes. um, they would have a resolution of about 10 centimeters. And, and I guess this is kind of one of those misnomers people think about, you know, you see the reading a newspaper from space. If the telescope would need to be so, so large, you just can't do it. Yes, but 10 centimetres is... You can see a lot with that. That's right. But you're not going to read a newspaper over someone's shoulders. Th that, that was four times better than that first image we saw of the cars. That's right. Then, of course, there's area imaged. So that's our area before, uh, and that's great, but wouldn't it be nice if you got all this? So that's right. So you're not just seeing the car park, but a large section of campus. And now you can actually then also add in information. It's actually multiple playing fields on an oval, multiple buildings, the path, etc. So again, this depends what you're trying to do. Like if you're a military and trying to spot when the enemy offensive is going to come, yeah. then you could well look at the wrong place if your field of view is too small. That's right. Um, so you want to survey a whole area to make sure they're not hiding under trees over here as opposed to over there. Uh, but, uh, and it's a bit of a trade-off. Yeah. Um, this is set partially by the camera, how many okay. pixels you got in your camera. For a long time, this is what really limited things. You only had, say, a million pixels yep. and so you had to decide whether you wanted to use those million pixels to get a really zoomed in image of a small area or a zoomed out image of a large area. That's right, there's only so many pixels go on but we we know that's changing right? I mean mobile yep. phones now have cameras with more pixels than some of the early satellites. Yes, now it's basically how fast you can download the data that's the uh, problem that you could take. You can have what, what <laughs> huge format cameras taking millions of pictures but then you've got to download them to Earth. Yeah, it's no use just standing it up there, you actually need it on the ground. Yeah. 
And often the limitation historically has been, OK, let's see, you've got images of all of Russia looking for where they're hiding their tanks. You have to find them. Does that mean someone has to go over the entire thing with a pair of uh, eyeglasses? This is what happened in the, the yes, aerial yeah. photographs in World that's War what you, II. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what used to happen. But now uh, that, that was the limitation. The limitation was how many people you needed to, to be sitting there trying to process all these images. But nowadays, with artificial yeah. intelligence, you might be able to find me all the tanks in Russia. Yeah, It's a lot of, lot of megapixels of images. Um, so the way these things would work is that they will typically be flying around the Earth in low Earth orbit every 90 minutes, yep. and they will be commanded. When it comes over the ground station, you might upload the commands for the next few orbits. So yep. I want to take a picture of this place, this place, this place. Then it might fly over, get a picture here, a picture there. I can only look a certain distance sideways. Yeah. And then whenever it goes over the ground station, for example, the Maxar commercial yes. one has two ground stations. Yep. So maybe every few orbits it'll go over one of them and then it can download as much as it can as it briefly flies over and get more commands for its next few orbits. And, and that's got part of the planning, right? There's also only so much data you can store on board per one of these orbits because that means you need the computer processing to actually stay and save it on board, which is complexity and cost in the satellite. That's right.